All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sapphire Glitched Softlock Percent. So, this is. Oh, sorry. I'm hearing an echo. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, this is Glitched Softlock Percent. I am going to be putting the game into a state that is no longer continuable um, as fast as possible. The main difference here is that uh, we allow glitches. The original softlock percent uh, in this game, uh, world record is by Ananan, I believe, uh, does not allow glitches. And there's a pretty complicated route that um, involves going all the way through Norman, teleporting back to um, back to what's it called, Duford, and then. From there, Briny is no longer there to take you back to either Slateport or Pedalburg. Uh, so you're essentially stuck on the island with no way to get back. Um, this is a lot faster and um, a lot sillier, I would say. Um, it's a pretty weird softlock, but without further ado, I will count down from three and then we'll go. Starting in three, two, one, go. So there's sort of a lot of background if you want to really understand all the glitches. Um, I'll get more in depth into that uh, tomorrow during the catch em all run because that really is a big showcase of all the glitches in this game. Um, but I'll try to keep it a little more uh, condensed for this run, uh, partially just because we don't have that much, <laughs> that much time in the run to cover everything. Um, but I'll cover the important stuff so, the start of the game is pretty much the same. Yeah, the glitches can only be unlocked after the first gym badge in practice. In theory, you could unlock it before the first gym badge. The way that the glitches work in this game require either the move Thief or the move Covet. And neither of those moves are very easily accessible through level up unless you yeah they're basically not accessible through level up they're only accessible on i believe puchiana and zigzagoon which they both learn at very high level so you'd have to grind up a lot just to unlock the glitch before roxanne which wouldn't really save much time overall but if you really wanted to you could so, for practicality, the glitches unlock after Roxanne, uh, which means that we'll actually only need one gym badge to complete this category. We're mostly just going through the intro here, same as normal. Getting a, a lay of the land, learning what the town is all about. Talking to our rival, same old, same old. And then we are going to do an RNG manipulation here uh, for our mudkip. We need to get decent stats, just like most uh, glitchless runs, uh, or any percent runs as well. Uh, however, one nice thing about this category, and most glitched categories, are that uh, there are actually... Oops. Is that up? There are actually two mudkips that are viable. Uh, the Normally you would only run the naughty mudkip in a glitchless run, because you need to use it for the whole run, so you need it to be very, very strong. Uh, but in this case, we actually don't need Mudkip for very long, so the Hasty will actually do the job. And this is pretty convenient for a marathon as well. Because it means that we don't actually have to check the Mudkip stats first. We can just check the gender and the HP value, and the, the Pooch's gender as well and we can confirm that we have either the Naughty or the Hasty, and what that allows us to do is actually do the Extended Encounterless Manip, 
which in glitchless runs in a marathon, for example, you couldn't do because you'd want to check to make sure that you got the right mudkip before uh, continuing because there'd be a whole lot of time loss if you went through the whole rival battle and then realized, oh, I have the wrong mudkip um, and have to do all of that over, over again. But you'll see here that we can actually do the extended manip. Uh, I won't know for sure if I have the hastier than naughty, but in both any percent and softlock percent, uh, and even catch them all for that matter, the hasty and the naughty are both viable. Hasty is slightly worse, has some worse ranges on certain fights. Uh, some people will fight uh, an extra trainer in Roxanne's gym to make up for that, uh, but you don't have to. A, I would say that a lucky hasty run is just as good as a average naughty run. So they're both definitely runnable. Pretty much just mash and tackle through the fight here, and we'll see our HP at the end. I guess maybe I should have saved for that in the off chance that we die, but... And we did get the Naughty. Very nice. First try Mudkip in a marathon. I'd love to see it. But yeah, starting out with a two frame window for the start of the game as opposed to a one frame window definitely makes getting on runs easier. Uh, I usually only go for the naughty if I'm going for like a world record pace run, but for categories like this, uh, both are totally fine. So yeah, our rival's just going to give us some Pokeballs now. It's a pretty standard Hoenn region story. Uh, unfortunately, we're kind of going to fail on our mission to save the Hoenn region here. We're going to get stuck and not be able to really do our job. So hopefully Brendan can pick up the slack for us. So I'll explain a little bit about kind of the general strats. Like at this point, we're still going glitchless. Should heal here as well. But the reason why we saved and quit at the start of the, or right before the starter bag, was to do an RNG manipulation to get a specific mudkip that has specific IVs and a spe specific nature. I probably should have saved for this fight as well, but we're at full HP. It's pretty safe from here. So this fight is a speed tie, meaning the Zigzagoon and the Mudkip have the same speed, so it's a 50-50 for whoever goes first. Uh, we lost two of them. Uh, kind of the one of the worst outcomes you can get is to lose the speed tie turn one and then get growled. Got a lucky crit there, though. Made up for it. And we're basically going to ignore all these encounters for now. We could weaken them and catch them. We do actually need some extra encounters in this category, in our party. But we'll save that for a little later. We're getting a lot of encounters. And this Ross has Trace for ultimate time loss. We'd love to see it. All right, and then this shop is going to deviate a little bit from the norm. I 
should be plenty to do what we need. So we did buy 14 orange males. If you followed any of the recent developments in Gen 3 glitches in both uh, Ruby and Sapphire, as well as Fire Red and Leaf Green, you'll know that male is kind of the core of all of it. There's some pretty crazy stuff you can do. Ruby Sapphire is probably the least crazy in terms of how game-breaking it is, but I would also say it's one of the funnier things you can do, just because it has a more... A more visual impact of just something showing up on your screen that obviously shouldn't be there. Uh, in Emerald and Fire Leaf Green, for any percent, for example, uh, the mail glitch allows for arbitrary code execution, which allows you to do basically anything you want in the game. So you can set a code to warp you to the Hall of Fame, uh, and that makes any percent very, very fast. But also, you don't get to see exactly the full extent of what else the glitch can do. Uh, and Sapphire, kind of because you're more limited, you get to be a little bit more creative with your glitch uses, uh, which is kind of interesting. You might also notice we talked to Norman from the side when we did that first cutscene. That is actually a relatively new development that we figured out was faster by about 16 frames. Uh, it's been done in Tasses multiple times. But it was just one of those things that I think people never uh, connected the dots on until recently. So it's a funny little development. And then here we did another RNG manipulation to catch a Wingle. Similar to the glitchless run. Uh, this glitchless, or sorry, this Wingle has the same stats as glitchless and everything. It has very good special attack, and also has the right amount of uh, defense values to usually die to the upcoming Geodude. I am honestly playing pretty risky here, but I know that we have a lot of backup potions, so I can afford to play a little risky. And we also still have the save at Wingle, so if things do go horribly wrong, like with a crit or something, uh, we can always go back to our save. It's not too far away. Very nice. That was a very, very clean Aqua Pooch fight. That fight is notorious for being very, very annoying in the Gen 3 games. It has sand attack, which lowers your accuracy, makes it really annoying. You get kind of chained into multiple sand attacks where you get sand attacked, and then you, because of that you miss, and so then it gives it more opportunities to sand attack, and it just becomes a vicious cycle. Uh, but we actually got none of that there, and even dodged a tackle. And uh, keep an eye out for those twins on the bridge. They are a surprise tool that'll help us later. Okay, I will definitely save for this fight, though, because I can totally mess up the run if you get unlucky here.
this strategy has been shown off many times in the past, but I always think it's really cool to swap in Wingle, weaken the Geodude just enough with the Water Gun so that Mudkip can finish it off, and then let the Wingle faint so that Mudkip gets all the XP. It gives you just enough for level 10, which is when you get Water Gun. Water Gun is very, very good with Torrent, same type attack bonus, and then Geodude's obviously being four times weak to it, it really just melts through most of this gym. Now, this will be a pretty interesting variance from what we normally see in a glitchless run. Is we're actually taking the long way around here, skipping Tommy. And we're going to save as well, just in case. So, in a glitchless run, you would fight both of those gym trainers. It makes the Roxanne fight a little easier, uh, but you also just need the XP to make sure you evolve before Brawly and all that good stuff. The XP is very important, but in glitched runs and softlock percent especially, where you're not going to be sticking around that long, we can actually afford to skip that trainer. If I had the hasty Mudkip, I would probably fight that trainer for safety, because having the extra XP is actually pretty useful for this fight. The first Geodude, for example, is a 50% range if you have the Hasty Mudkip. But even missing that range isn't too bad, because it actually will then use up a potion, and then that's one less potion that Nosepass will use. So, we are level 12 here, compared to normally level 13 is the glitchless strat. We do slightly less damage than we would at level 13, but we actually take the same amount of damage, so it's really not too bad, especially after a Growl. You're only taking generally 8 or 9 damage from a Rock Throw. Not too bad at all. And it sets it up like this, where we can stay in Torrent, but still be in position to live another Rock Throw. Just like that. Very clean fight. Wow, and that was almost a sub-17 Roxanne for uh, saving on multiple fights. That was honestly very, very solid. And yeah, that's the only gym badge we're going to get this run. So yeah, question in the chat, there's an option in the settings of this game where you can set the L button to basically be a second A button, and so it just makes it a little easier to mash, gives you a another button to press. I'm actually going to heal here. Just to be ultra safe, I don't want to get crit or something by the Swismer. Yeah. That's good. I don't actually have the notes up for this, but I believe I can Pokeball this. If it's not guaranteed, it's still pretty likely. I have to double check though. Some things you can Pokeball at low HP guaranteed, some things you can't. Uh, but we need one more catch as well. Oops. So you can see we also skipped that hiker. 
The hacker is usually fought in glitchless, or is always fought in glitchless, but most glitchless runs or glitchless categories fight that hiker just because he has three geodudes. They're quick and easy experience to hit that evolution. Pretty uneventful Aqua Pooch 2 fight. It also has Sand Attack, but we 2-shot it this time instead of 5-shot it, so it's much less of a concern. So I actually intentionally ran through more grass there, just because I knew I needed a second encounter. Oops. Should be fine to Great Ball this. Now the reason I'm catching this many things, even though we're, you know, over halfway done with the run, is because the glitches in this game actually require a certain party size to an extent. If you really get into the weeds, you can technically do the glitches in this game with only one Pokemon in your party, but it takes a long time to set up. Basically, we saved this guy, for those that are unfamiliar with the story. We saved this employee from these Aqua Grunts that were kind of bullying bullying him. And he gave us a great ball, and then the, the president of the company gave us some, some stuff too, to help out. The Poke Nav is really not that important. It's like a cell phone, but the letter is what lets us actually progress the story, which is very important. We're going to enter the Pokemon Center here, not go into the Mart or anything, we really don't need anything else. Just passed those uh, double battle trainers again. They're on our... They're, they'll be our target soon. Put it that way. And yeah, now Briny will say, Oh, you need help? Alright, we get to go on his boat. And yeah, as I mentioned at the start of this run, Briny is the key to the glitchless softlocked... Glitchless softlocked category. Because after Norman, normally in Emerald, for example, after you beat Norman, the game forces you to get the Surf HM. It activates a cutscene immediately. But in Ruby and Sapphire, that is not the case. Uh, it does not force you to get the HM, so you can actually teleport back to Duford. And then you have no way of getting off the island, because you now got a surf. Uh, so, and Briny goes away after Norman, which is why you can't escape. I was a little late on that ball, and I messed up my inputs. We'll see if it gets in. Nice. So that's another RNG manipulation for an Abra. 
Now, this might seem sort of counterintuitive to catch an Abra in softlock percent. Because it has teleport, that's like the really the only reason why you catch an Abra generally. And that is true to an extent. However, teleport will still be useful in order to get to the spot we want to be. There's honestly like w before you even get your second badge, there's probably three or four soft locks that you could do if I had to guess. I'd have to go through and confirm, but there are a lot of soft locks you can do with the glitches in this game. So there is some interesting routing that goes into like which which one is actually the fastest. But all the other ones require beating Rival 2. Well, I don't know about all the other ones, but all the other kind of reasonable ones would require beating Rival 2, which would require Marsh Stomp, which requires a lot of extra double battle, or not a lot of extra double battles, but a lot of extra battles in general in order to, you know, get enough experience to then evolve and yada yada. And then Rival 2 as well is kind of a difficult fight, especially if you're lower level than a glitchless run. Like, we wouldn't want to fight Brawly for the extra experience, so you're going to be even lower level. And that's why we do this soft lock instead. So here is our piece de resistance. TM46. Did that in the backwards order. Okay. Teach Thief for our boy Abra. And then, like I said, we use Abra to go back to where we set our Pokemon Center. And then <clears throat> here's the crux of our glitch. It's kind of crazy how early you can set this up, like less than. 30 minutes in and we're already activating the largest glitch that you can do in this game really and it's really easy to do this casually as well you don't need like any specific uh stats on your pokemon or anything like that you really just need thief or covet and a piece of mail that's really all there is to it so we're gonna thief and tackle this lotad which is a decent range to die it's about an 80 percent with the naughty it's worse with the hasty which is another downside and then we get Bide, so we're going to Tackle, and then this is the key, is we use Thief on Mudkip. And as long as it says Abra stole the mail, that's all we need. We have now glitched the game. Things have gone awry. Yeah, piece de resistance. Sorry for all the French fans in the chat. And now... We're going to remove this mail from Abra. Kind of just looks like a normal mail right now, but it is not. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that happens very quickly here, so... Pay attention, because it gets pretty crazy. Oops, wrong thing. Here's our glitched mail. <laughs> We're going to give that to Mudkip, and if you didn't miss it, you can see it didn't actually look like a mail, despite it being in our mailbox. It looked like a normal item. Oops, I forgot to do one important thing. So the downside of catching Abra is now we need to deposit it, because if we have Abra with teleport, it'd be pretty easy to get out. And 
We actually need to catch one more thing here. We're just going to catch it up here. It'd be pretty easy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that mattered. That was unfortunate. Need to catch one more encounter. Okay, that did a lot less damage than I thought. Oh my gosh. Wrong way. Come on. <laughs> no, we're gonna die to this Wurmple. Okay. <laughs> this is a problem. Uh, it's okay if our Mudkip dies here. As long as we can actually catch this thing. Rest in peace, Mudkip. Okay, if this doesn't get in, this is kind of a problem, because then we gotta go buy more Pokeballs. Okay. <laughs> Last ball. Not even close. Not even worried. We got a, some nice variety on our, on our team here. Alright, and here things get a little crazy. So we're going to take whatever the heck this item is from our Mudkip. And then we're going to give everybody a nice little piece of mail. And what we put in these mails doesn't really matter until the last one. We'll turn this Wurmple into our glitch machine, because it kind of annoyed us. And you can see we have this uh, glitched item in our bag. Unfortunately, glitched items don't really do much in Gen 3. But now we have this, and this is one of the biggest glitches in the game. I call this QMM for question mark mail. Most people call it mail glitch uh, in general, but this specific screen I like to call QMM. And now we do the glitch. There are a few phrases that work for this, but I found kind of a funny one I thought for this run. We're gonna type lovey dovey Puchiena Abra. Some poetry. And then you can see, we are on a door. And when you save and reset on a door in this game, you'll see what happens. The door opens, and we get forced down a tile, actually. And then we're going to do that setup one more time, but instead of lovey-dovey, <laughs> we're going to say... Volt Absorb. I like that better. And then... Here's Blank's base. We are in a... Mysterious secret base. You can see it's legitimate. Unfortunately, we don't have decorations. I could have gone on a detour to buy some, but I wasn't sure how much extra time I would have. You can see, it's totally real. And then now, once we leave, get ready. We're gonna return our stuff to our PC. Sure, we didn't have anything to begin with. And we have become a tree. And now I'll save, and after the save completes, that'll be time. So once it says the save is done. That's time. <laughs> so, we are not actually a tree, but we're kind of a tree. 
You could call this tree percent, yes. We are actually, and it's it's hard to see. If you have if you have the bike, for example, you can see it better. But in the exact middle of the screen, that exact middle tile, we are inside that tile. But the tree is completely blocking us. If we were one tile to the right or one tile down, we could actually escape because we could walk out of the tree. But all four of our, the directions around us are also trees that we cannot walk through. And yeah, the way that that happened is because we went out of bounds. When you go out of bounds on the left or the top side of um, a current screen, and then you enter a secret base and exit a secret base, entering the base sets your warp to the place that you entered from. And then when you exit, the game tries to read that location but sees that it's out of bounds and it defaults to the middle of the map. So if you pulled up a picture of Route 104 and you counted out the tiles, you would see that this is exactly the middle tile of the map. And so we are now here forever. Uh, we don't have any Abra in our party. You know, we don't have Fly or anything. We don't have Dig. We don't have any escape ropes, but even if we did, you know, they wouldn't work. Uh, and we can try to do some more glitches, but they don't actually do anything. Let's see, we can fill this all up. It's just gonna change those same tiles that we saw earlier. You can see nothing really happened. Only way to escape from here is to fly or teleport, really. Which we cannot do. But yeah, this is now no longer playable. You cannot progress from here in any way. You have to you know, reset your save file, start over. See, I can save and re or I can reset, I can soft reset, nothing I can do. So yeah, that's how fast you can soft lock the game uh, if you allow glitches. That's really all from me tonight. Uh, I'm going to prepare for the catch em all run tomorrow morning, and I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions about any of the glitches, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I've done a lot of work to researching them, and yeah, hope you all liked it.